Hey guys, the Jason C here. Uh, back y'all with another installment of our series of Georgia Pier Project. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about uh, one of my favorite spots and a location that uh, doesn't seem to get a lot of pressure. And I've always had pretty good luck there as far as um, shore based fishing is concerned. And that's going to be Mary Ross Waterfront Park in Brunswick, Georgia. Um, Mary Ross is located uh, downtown Brunswick, of course, on the water. Um, it's uh, a shipping basin. Um, doesn't really have a, a river or, um, you know, creek that empties into it. Um, it kind of dead ends not too far past um, the... Uh, the waterfront dock there, the waterfront pier, if you will. Um, so it's 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 just a turning basin for large uh, large ships that come in there to to offload their cargo. Um, also serves as a docking area for uh, riverboat cruises, uh, shrimp boats, um, other large vessels. Uh, there are uh, shrimp boats anchored there off and on. Although the last few times I've been there, there have not been shrimp boats. Uh, when I first started fishing there many, many years ago, gosh, 30 years ago, um, there used to be shrimp boats there all the time and you would have to fish in between them. But uh, here lately, that, that's not been the case. Um, like I said, over the years, uh, really good spot for a lot of variety. Um, I sat down the other evening and actually counted all of the species of fish that I've caught there over the years, and it's over 30. Uh, I don't know of any other place in coastal Georgia where I have caught that many species of fish from the shore or up here. Um, I, I can't think of any other place. Um, and far as those species go, you can catch everything from trout, your redfish, your flounder, uh, whiting, bluefish. Um, they make up the majority of what I've caught there over the years. Um, but I've also caught things like uh, jacks, um, ladyfish, um, black sea bass, um, small sharks, um, just, just a myriad of species. And I've also caught some, uh, less common species in there over the years that I have not caught anywhere else inshore in Georgia. And those are I've caught small grouper in there. I've caught, um, snapper in there, mangrove snapper. Um, black sea bass and rock sea bass. Um, rock sea bass I've actually caught in there pretty frequently and I have not caught rock sea bass anywhere else from the shore in the state of Georgia that I can recall. So that's pretty neat. Um, pretty much every rock sea bass I've ever caught in Georgia inshore has been at Mary Ross Waterfront Park. Um, some other oddball species I've seen out there, sea robins, um, my daughter caught a hake there um, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I've caught a tarpon in there. Um, just just a number of, of species. It's very common to go fishing at Mary Ross and um, in a day get 10 different species. I've done that several times there. Um, as far as how to get to it, it's um, right there in downtown Brunswick on Gloucester Street. Um, pretty easy to find. Uh, I'll put some court. I'll put some coordinates up here for you and some uh, directions. Um, but basically, if you can get to the Sydney Lanier Bridge there in Brunswick, you can get to Mary Ross Waterfront Park. Um, let's talk about types of uh, gear you'll need to fish there. Um, any of your standard light to medium tackle you can use. Um, if you're not going after anything big, you know you're. you're your spin cast, your heavier spin cast, um, medium to heavy spinning gear, gear um, conventional gear, um, 15 to 20 pound test will be fine for 99% of what's in there. Um, I haven't really caught anything in there that really stressed heavy tackle. I may have hooked into a couple of big sharks or rays in there that I couldn't turn over the years, but um, for the most part, you can get away with 15 to to 20 pound class gear. As uh, far as your terminal tackle, uh, pretty simple. You're gonna wanna do predominantly bottom fishing here. 
and you have to use a rig that keeps your bait off the bottom. Um, I don't know that I've ever fished a place with so much structure on the bottom, so many snags. If you do not keep your bait off the bottom, you are going to get hung and you're going to lose gear over and over and over again. Got to keep your bait off the bottom. So any kind of chicken rig, hollow rig, um, the, the flounder rigs that have the floats on them that keep your keep your bait elevated off the bottom, those work really well. You just have to keep your bait off the bottom. Um, float rigs, uh, slip corks, um, rattle corks, popping corks, I've used those in there from time to time, and I've caught fish in there uh, on those, but predominantly I, I fish on the bottom when I'm, when I'm there. Um, bait, live shrimp works okay, uh, but in this one location, I've pretty much always done better on dead shrimp. Um, we got on a good weak fish bite there a few weeks ago, me and my daughter, and they would not touch a live shrimp. But if we took the live shrimp and cut it up and put half of a dead shrimp on there, we were killing the weak fish there for about an hour. I don't know how many we caught. I think I caught eight in an hour, and they were all good size. Of course, I threw them all back, um, and we'll discuss that here a little later. Um, but yeah, shrimp, um, I've used squid in there before. Uh, they have a hard time getting it off there as easy as they do the shrimp. So you might want to go to the squid, especially if the, uh, the little black sea bass and the rock sea bass are, are pretty thick and the pinfish around the dock are pretty thick. They'll, they'll steal shrimp pretty, pretty easily. Um, pinfish, uh, if you're set up at the dock and you're looking at the water at the far right end where the dock ends, um, there's a little corner there, and at high tide, that little spot is eat up with good-sized pinfish to fish with. You can go down there with uh, a small um, spinning rig, small hook, pieces of squid or pieces of shrimp, and just free line it down there. You can catch all the pinfish you want to fish for. Um, I've had my daughter down there a few times and put her in charge of catching bait because she liked catching all those little fish one after the other, and she kept us stocked with uh, fresh live pinfish. And the pinfish are good for, you know, jumbo trout, redfish. Um, I've caught a few flounder on the pinfish over the years. Bluefish, when they're in there, they love them. Uh, a lot of things will eat, um, you know, live pinfish. But predominantly what I use in there is going to be uh, fresh dead shrimp. And this is going to be a theme if you watch a lot of my videos for you guys that haven't fished a lot with shrimp. If you're using dead shrimp, rule of thumb, if you would not eat it, do not fish with it. You got shrimp that's turned old nasty colors, orange and red and yellow, and it looks kind of crappy or smells kind of crappy. Don't fish with that crap. All you're going to do is catch catfish and stingrays. And saltwater catfish are aggravating to deal with, and they love nasty shrimp. So keep the fresh shrimp on there, and maybe you can keep the uh, catfish and stingrays at, at bay, if you will. Um and I'll, I repeat that to everybody. It's just a general rule, fresh shrimp. A lot of times, even when I'm going to use dead shrimp, I will buy live local shrimp, cut it up, and use it fresh. It's a lot more expensive, but I personally have, I personally have better luck with that. So I'll do that often. Um, what else? Um, water depth. Uh, the water in there at high tide is probably about 20 foot deep. Right off the dock, it's pretty deep. Um, you don't have a lot of current in there. Again, I said it's a it's a ship basin, a turning basin. So even though you have tide fluctuations, you don't have the stiff currents that you do in some locations where you have to use a lot of weight. Uh, very seldom have I fished there where I've had to use more than two ounces of weight to keep my bait on the bottom. Um, that can be a blessing, that can be a curse. Some people like to fish current, some fish bite better when there's a little bit of current. Um, the fish there don't ever see a lot of current, so um, it's just a little bit different fishing. Um, high tide generally is the best tide for me to fish there personally. I always have the best luck. I try to get there two hours before high tide, fish the last two hours of the incoming, first hour or two of the outgoing when the water's nice and clear. Um, never really done a lot in there at low tide for some reason. <laughs> Um, well, let's talk about the, uh, the the good, bad, and the ugly report for that location. Um, good, it's easy to get to. Uh, you can basically drive your car right up to it. 
Um, you can park. If you've got a pole rig, you can literally park and be fishing in 30 seconds. That's how close it is. So you don't have to lug your gear a long way if you're one of these people like me sometimes where I, I have more gear than I like to carry sometimes. Um, it's a great spot because you can walk literally 30 foot from your car and be fishing. Um, a lot of variety. Um, usually there's some pretty good action in there. Um, if you like catching variety and uh, maybe you got kids that like to, to go fishing and you want to keep them busy, you can keep a lot of variety uh, or you can catch a lot of variety. Uh, another good thing, again, if you got kids, there is a playground nearby, a big open field. Um, there are bathrooms nearby. Now, sometimes they're clean, sometimes they're not, but there are bathrooms nearby. Um, so th it has a, has a lot of benefits. Um, it's close enough to downtown that if your wife or your kids are with you and they want to go get something to eat or something to drink, um, they can find something like that in just a few minutes. You're right there in downtown Brunswick. Um, so that's pretty much all the good. Um, the bad, um, this may not be that bad for some folks, but some folks are, are kind of uncomfortable um, around homeless people. Uh, Mary Ross Waterfront Park has become very popular in the last few years with the homeless community. Um, I have yet to go there over the last couple of years where I did not see several homeless people in the area. Um, they usually don't bother you. They will come up to you and talk to you. Um, sometimes they're doing a little bit of panhandling and scamming and trying to get some money from you, but I've never really had any serious issues out of them, but they are there. Um, a couple times when I fish there at night, they're, they're a little bit more persistent at night, so maybe that can make some folks uncomfortable, but I, I've never really had a serious problem with them myself. So to each their own, your mileage may differ, but just need to throw that out there. Um, the ugly, uh, during the summer, there's very little breeze down there and it can get blazing hot. Uh, you're sitting on that concrete pier, there is no shade unless you bring your own, it can get blazing hot. And another thing that's probably, I would consider pretty ugly is, maybe the fish aren't so edible there. Um, me personally, that doesn't really bother me because I don't really keep fish. Uh, I'm a catch and release guy. If I'm gonna keep maybe one or two that I'm gonna cook that night or the following day, I don't like to freeze fish but I let all my fish go. Uh, we got on that weak fish bite the other day and me and my daughter caught several of them and they were big, beautiful weak fish, yellow mouth trout, silver trout, depending on who you're talking to. It's a dang weak fish, but anyway, another video. Uh, we threw them all back. Um, not gonna keep them. Caught several croaker, spot, um, some whiting, threw them all back. Um, I'm just a catch and release guy. I've actually had somebody from EPD come and talk to me while I was fishing there, handing out paperwork, telling me that that area is not good for fish consumption, if you will. Um, so there's that. Uh, if you're looking to go catch a mess of fish to eat, maybe not the best place in the world. Um, I'm not gonna get into the science of how many parts per million or how infected the fish are and how much fish you got to eat to have adverse effects and all that. I just don't eat them. Um, to each their own. Some people like to fish to eat, catch fish to eat. I'm there for the thrill of reeling them in. Um, if you want fish to eat, let's all face it, it's a whole hell of a lot cheaper just to go to the seafood store and buy it most of the time. Uh, we spend a lot of money chasing these fish so I'm there for the thrill of catching, not necessarily for the satisfaction of eating them. So that's your good, bad, and ugly. Um, again, try it out. It's got a lot of things going for it. Um, location, easy to get to, easy to keep your family happy, easy to get away from. If you get tired of fishing, you can easily go do something else. You're right there in Brunswick. Um, it's just, a, just an all-around good place to fish. Um, and I've had just tons of luck there over the years. So anyway, that's all I have. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Please comment down below and tell me what you've uh, caught at Mary Ross Waterfront Park, if you've ever fished there before. Um, 
please like, share, and subscribe the videos. Still trying to build this little channel. Hope y'all, hopefully y'all like this kind of content. Um, until next time, this is the Jason C. Tied Down Outdoors. Thank you for watching.